In this video we'll take a look at the do loop within C sharp. And to begin I'll go ahead and create a new project and I'm just going to go ahead and call this project do loop and we'll go ahead and create ourselves a form with let's go ahead and add some objects on here. I'm going to go ahead and add a button let's see, and a list box. So there's the list box and the button. Ah, I gotta scroll up here. There's the button. And we'll go ahead and name this button. CMD OK. Actually we'll do run again. And I'll go ahead and create the text for run. And the list box. We'll just go ahead and name it LST output. Alright, so that's the name of my list box, and I'll have to go ahead and just change the size of that, make it a little larger there for us to read. So we're going to go ahead and begin this, and I'm going to go ahead and minimize that, and I'm going to go ahead now and ahead, go ahead and double click on the run button so that we can write for this click event for the CMD run button that we've got. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and create or start off with the do command. And after the do loop, we're going to go ahead, or after the word do, we're going to go ahead and do an opening. And I'll go ahead and hit enter and a closing curly brace. And at the closing curly brace, we're going to go ahead and type in while. And this is where the actual condition is going to be checked. And I'll just go ahead and put a set of parentheses there. Now before we actually set up our loop, what we're going to want to do is create ourselves a loop control variable like we've done similar to the while loop. And so before the word do, I'm going to go ahead and declare and initialize a variable for this. And I'll just go ahead and say int, and we'll call it counter. And we're going to say it's equal to 1. And that's what we're going to use here as our variable to check to see whether or not we should do the loop. And so this is going to go, go ahead and begin. I'll write here in my condition while counter is less than 10. And so that's what we're going to use here as our condition. So now let's go ahead and write our code. So I'm going to go ahead and place that between these curly braces here for my do loop. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add some, or add the actual counter to this list box. So I'll just go ahead and type in LST output dot items dot add. And this is going to allow us to add items to this list box. And in parentheses here, I'll go ahead and type in counter. That's what I want to add into the text box every time this loop runs. And also within this loop, I'm going to go ahead and I'll put a semicolon there. I'm going to increment counter by one. And that way we can manipulate that variable and cause it to eventually end my loop. I'll just go ahead and say counter equals counter plus one. All right. And so the only other thing that we need to do is run our application. Now you can see here I actually need a semicolon at the end of the while so I'm going to put one there. Now everything should look like it should going to work so let's go ahead and try it out by, by running it. And I'll go ahead and hit run and you'll see already right, displayed one. So let's see what we've done here in our code and see what's going on. So int counter equals one do. We're going to go ahead and do this and we're going to go ahead and write our counter and we're going to say counter equals counter plus one, so we're incrementing by one. And while counter is greater than ten, oh, I see what I've done now. I've got a greater than symbol rather than a less than symbol here, which is kind of interesting that it actually ran. So let's go ahead and run it one more time, and let's go ahead and bring this in here and hit run. It actually prints one, so it actually ran part of the loop. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and see what actually is happening here and explain how this do loop works. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create this variable here. This is what we're going to use as a counter. Now notice in code, it's going to start here and it's going to go to the next line and it's going to go to the do. Now there's nothing here checking my condition. And so automatically, it's going to go ahead and start the loop without checking any condition at all. And so within my loop, first thing it's going to do is add an item to this list box, which happens to be counter, which is currently one. And then it's going to go ahead and increment it by one. Now it has done the loop the first time and so as opposed to the while loop where it checks, this, checks the condition to see if it's true before the loop runs, the do loop actually runs the loop first and then checks the condition to see if it needs to run one more time or an additional time. And so I've actually ran it and then it comes down here while 
while counter is, and this says, greater than 10. And so what we've got here is counter is not greater than 10. In this case, counter is 2 at the moment when we run down here the first time. And so the loop will no longer run. So this is the difference or the contrast to the while loop uh, here by it actually running the code first, then checking the condition. So I'll change this to a less than. So now that we've got the right syntax here, or right logic to our code, while counter is less than 10, this should run now every time. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. And I'll hit run. And you'll notice that it runs through every time. Now it stops at 9. Why does it stop at 9? And the reason being is because when it gets to 9, so let's see, it'll run through at 8, counter equals counter plus 1, which is 9. It'll run through, and it will display, because, because it's 9 is less than 10, it comes back through. And it'll go ahead and actually output it when it's 9. But when it's 9, it's going to add itself or make it 10 at this line of code. And so then when it's 10, it's no longer going to run our loop. And so it does, does the check at the end rather than running it one more time to check. And so it does stop at 9. And this is the structure for the do loop. One thing to keep in mind is that the loop actually performs the task or the code that you've written in here before it does the condition. And so this varies from the while loop.